Let me tell you some updates. Uh, I fell. I fell very, very severely. Huge thing that I did ever since I installed the nine and a half inch risers. Harley X440 that I bought in India. And I, amazing. But some people didn't like the fact are going on a big, long three, four week trip. Uh, or loosen the nut over here or the bolt over here. Whew. That is crazy. Hey. Good evening. How you doing? Very, very long time since I've uh, vlogged, since I, I put out a video. I'd say about a week, maybe 10 days even. This video I had to put out. I felt that I need to. Let me tell you some updates of what was going on and why I have not been posting for for quite a while. There you go, a little bit, some light. I wrote things down, but mainly, the one main thing is that I was, I was sick. I was sick for almost a week now. I fell, I fell ill, big time. Very, very, very severely. It was, you know, when flying, and flying a lot, I've been, it's summer, summertime you fly really a lot cover a lot of uh, hours in the cockpit. Flying a lot of hours, your body really, you know, jet lag and the the thin air uh, that you have on the flight itself and all the, it's actually very body, bad for your body. And recovering from a flight, you know, if you, took, if you take a five hour flight, so I take 12 hour flights and if I do quite a few of these a week, the immune system really, really takes a toll and your your body's more susceptible to to getting sick more difficult for the body for the immune system to fight viruses a week ago literally i i just fell i fell ill i was like headaches fatigue my whole body now you can say it's a severe flu it's a severe cold congestion everything you can also say covid but like uh, yeah and, and covid is a real thing like don't you can make fun of it whatever it, it COVID is just a virus. They just gave it a name. So like, and everybody, you say, oh, COVID, go get tested, go get tested. Nah, why should I go get tested? So I know I have COVID. What does it matter if it's a COVID, if it's COVID or it's a virus or it's the flu, the body will fight it and I'll get over it. And that's exactly what, uh, you know, what was going on. Oh, the mosquitoes are going to kill me now. Anyway, for the last week, I was like literally in the house, in bed two days, in the house, not doing anything, didn't have... Uh, you know motivation to do anything. So I didn't I literally didn't post anything. Oh, I'm fixing up uh, Things with the bike. I did a few uh, a few fixes over here Anyway, so this was uh, last week. I was like I was completely dead. What else? Mosquitoes are killing me over here. I can tell I'm gonna get back into the house and I'm gonna be dead uh, Okay, so like I've been sick. I'm reading out of my let me give you an update. A lot of people are asking, what did I ever do with that great Harley X440 that I bought in India and I did a, a video a series about. If you haven't seen those videos and you're kind of new to this channel, yeah, I rode in India, I went over, I, I rode a lot in India and I even bought my own Harley over there, an X440. So let me update you what's going on with the X440. The main reason why I bought the X440, the Harley X440 over there at the time, was as a content creator, a YouTube content creator, you wanna, you wanna give uh, interesting topics, interesting content, and you also try to be first, you know, first at the at a subject. So I was like literally thinking when I heard of those uh, the that X440 that is built by Hero, being built in India, in India, I was thinking this is probably gonna be. A bike that is going to hit the, the American market eventually. And uh, because, you know, Harley, I, I always believe that Harley needs a beginner's bike, uh, which is cheaper, not expensive. And that would look like the perfect bike for me. So I said, you know what? Let me go to India because I have access to India. If you watch my videos, you know I have a friend over there. I travel a lot over there and buy one over there and try to bring it to try to bring it to America be pretty much the first one on YouTube from like from the American market that rides the bike and reviews the bike. And once Harley brings it to America, I'll be on YouTube pretty much one of the first and that will give me an edge, you know, cause YouTube is all about being first, being original, being different. I try to do that. 
So that's that's the reason why I bought the bike. I went over there, took delivery, did a few rides, a nice, great trip over there. And my decision was that if I can, I'll try to bring it to America. I looked into it. It wasn't complicated, uh, but it was pricey. So, and it just didn't make sense to bring that bike with me uh, from India to America. The, the bike itself cost me like $3,000. And that's probably what the price would actually cost to bring it over. You know, with the shipping, uh, like freight, shipping, taxes, uh, paying a uh, custom uh, representative, whatever, it would probably cost me around three grand. So the whole bike itself would be around six, six and a half thousand dollars. And it's truthfully, I don't think it's a smart idea. I'm just keeping it over there. As a matter of fact, my buddy over there actually wants the bike for his daughters. His daughters are his daughters are trying are starting to learn how to ride motorcycles now. So he has two Harleys. He just got a fat boy, a fat boy, a fat Bob. Uh, a 2024 Fat Bob and a Sportster 1200, Iron 1200. Oh no, actually it's a tw uh, an Iron 883. Anyway, so his, he's gonna be riding with his daughter. So he just asked, he wants to keep the bike for himself. So it's, it's with him. He's using it. Whenever I go there, I'll use it. So that's the story with the X440. It's not coming to America. If it comes, if some, if a bike like that comes to America, then I'm definitely looking into it. Absolutely. That was a great second bike or third bike, actually. The big trip. We are planning, John and I and Danny also from Canada are going on a big, long three, four week trip all around from New Jersey, all the way to the West Coast and back, hitting the big parks, big events. It's gonna be a long time, a lot of miles. So I'm really looking forward to it, getting organized. What am I gonna be doing? What do I need to pack with me? What gear do I take on the bike? What exactly am I gonna take? How am I gonna load the bike? I'll tell you very soon. Tools, prepping the bike, oil changes before, wheels, uh, last minute uh, checks. It's not only a physical thing, it's also a mental thing. You know, what? how am I gonna, like what do I pack? What stuff do I pack? What will my day-to-day -day routine look like in terms of will I be posting anything on, on uh, Instagram, on uh, YouTube and things like that. A lot of, a lot of preparation going in for the next, uh, it's actually almost less than two weeks. So that's pretty much keeping me uh, pretty busy as well. As well is, uh, did you see this? This is a sport bike that I also have, this Aprilia RS660. Pretty cool. I'm learning how to ride that bike because I've never actually owned my own, uh, an own real sport bike. So I have actually a, a channel. It's called Gasoline 660. Take a look at that. If you're interested in sport bike, don't, don't come just because to make me feel good. Just if you're interested in sport bikes, take a look at that channel, look it up, Gasoline 660. I'll also put a little link over here down by the channel. So, so let me show you what I decided that I'll be using on my bike, Gregos. What will Gregos look like? I'll also do a dedicated video of, of what the, the, the actual setup is gonna be. But generally speaking, this is the plan. I'm gonna be taking my Saddleman, a step up, with a backrest, this step up is actually the the touring, the tourer, and it's great because it's got a backrest that I find really really important. Using my stock OEM saddlebags, as you know in the previous videos that I've shown before, I switched back to these and uh, took the uh, the touring setup that I had off. I'll be using this over here. I will have my Advan Black Tour Pack. This one is the Chop Tour Pack. That's the mid. That's the mid size, and that will fit with uh, the docking hardware that I have right here. Okay, that will fit. So the Tour Pack itself will finish. Will finish up over here, and I'll have between the Tour Pack. Tour Pack will be from here backwards. Here I'll have a pillion, space for a pillion, which I'm going to actually be taking. Surprise, surprise, no one. I'll be taking an extra Saddleman, an extra Saddleman bag that I should be getting very soon. So I think with all the, like I got this biggest Saddleman bag that I can get that's gonna be taking over here. It even has a backrest, although I'll be using the backrest of the Saddleman uh, seat right over there. I'll be right there. Then I'll have my backrest, I'll have that huge Saddleman bag and then the tour pack and then these bags. So 
Tell you the truth, I think I think I have enough, absolutely enough space. So that is gonna that is the plan setup. Okay, one big topic, or let's say one big update or a point that I'd like to talk about. Ever since I installed the Shark Demon, the Shark Demon light over here, right here, I got a lot of comments. People commenting. Let me show you. People are commenting that. They think the light is badass, it is cool, it is amazing. But some people didn't like the fact that if you look on the profile, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit too too sticking out, too too far out. Um, I can I can see what they're saying because the fairing is nicely round shaped and curved, and then suddenly there's this, you know, this parts sticking out. I can see why they feel that way. And I think that if, uh, I feel that if Custom Dynamics could have created somehow this bracket that holds this, this, uh, this, this Shark Demon Light created it that it's recessed even further back inside a little bit by, I would say an inch, it would be perfect. I can definitely see what they mean. But again, I think that is uh, that is slightly a bit nitpicking. But I did get these comments and I kind of agree that if it was in, if this was in pushed in, maybe half an inch or an, in, an inch further in, if that was possible to do, Custom Dynamics, please do it. Or actually, if there's anybody that is innovative over there and wants to do it themselves, just make the bracket and sell it. I think it'll be, it'll be, it will sell like hotcakes. But the look and uh, amount of light that it puts out is amazing. Another comment that I got about this, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take the bike out. People, when I was comparing the previous light to this, they said, ah, oh, it doesn't look that much different. The thing is, my other light was uh, aimed too low, uh, too high, and this one is too low. So what I'm going to do? The, uh, so it looked as if uh, you know they're not much. Uh, there's not much of a difference. Trust me, there's a huge, huge difference. Actually, what I'm going to do right now is going to take the bike out and uh, you know uh, adjust the light properly. According, I checked like the YouTube, the YouTube internet place, and they said there's like a 25 yard, no, 25 foot away from the wall you need to put it mark the height from the center of your beam to the ground which in my case is 35 inches mark a 35 inch on the garage door make a line and put the center of this beam over there and then I'll show you what it looks like so let me take the bike out now before I take the bike out and this is going to be like a little teaser there's a huge huge announcement a huge huge thing that I did Ever since I installed the nine and a half inch risers right here, this is a little teaser. Look at it well. I'll, tend, I'll tell you at the end of the video what I did. I did change something. Stay tuned to the end of the video. You'll see. But let me take the bike out, adjust the lights, and then I'll be back with the update about the risers. So I, I pulled the bike out and uh, I marked. Over here, you see exactly right here. Oh, sorry, wait, let me show you. I marked at 35 inches. That is exactly the height of my, the center of my uh, Shark Demon from the ground. From the ground, 35 inches. That is exactly the distance when the bike is standing up from the ground to the center of the Shark Demon. That's 35 inches now 25 feet away and they say that it needs to be exactly in the center of that line let me check what it's like right now yeah definitely too low even the top of the line is not even close I need to raise the light really really higher up okay what I did is I uh, untightened or loosened the nut over here or the bolt over here the bolt that is closer and I raised I raised the light. Let's see now. Oh, not so I can even raise it even further, further up, higher up. Absolutely. No problem. Now only the top is touching that line. 
They say I need to have the center, the center of the line, the center of the beam on that line. Let me raise it even further up. Oh, now it's much better. Now it's really good. Hope I'm not blinding anybody. Now all that's needed to do is to tighten that bolt back in. Oh man, look at this light. This looks really sick. Look at this. I know that all of you are waiting for a certain light to review. I have it. There's a reason why I didn't publish it yet. It's there. But look at the amount of lights on that. Oh my God, it's crazy. Let me put the high beams on. There you go. Whew. That is crazy. That is crazy. Low beam, high beam. Oh man. There you go. That's the light. The low beam. And that is the high beam. Low beam. High beam. That is crazy. Low beam. High beam. Oh man. Okay, let's. Let's tighten the, the shark demon. The breaking, the breaking news about the risers and handlebars. The last topic, which was the biggest uh, bait, and it's true, the risers. As you know, I installed on Grey Ghost over here, nine, nine and a half inch risers by Thrash and Supply with the high bend bar. And I did a full video about it and great Instagram post with a comparison of the stock, the six and a half that I had uh, by bunking at the time, and then the nine and a half. So I've been riding with this a little bit and it was, uh, it was awkward to me. It, it was just not natural to me. And I decided to go back, but not to six and a half. I went to seven and a half. What? Seven and a half? How is that even possible? Thrash and supply, seven and a half. Let me show you. So what I did is I got the six and a half inch, I don't know if you can see properly, six and a half inch uh, pullback riser by Thrash and Supply, but they have a great customization option where you can add blocks, uh, a block of uh, one inch. I added a one inch. You can actually add a half inch. You can add an inch and a half, whatever. So you can pretty much customize any size you want between six and a half to get all the way up to nine and a half. So that's how I got to seven and a half because, because I felt that uh, the nine and a half plus the risers put me at 13 and a half was a little bit too high up for me. It was somewhat awkward, not a natural comfortable position. On my other bikes, I used to ride with a 12 inch. So now I'm very much close to the 12 inch by going uh, I pretty much dropped from nine and a half to seven and a half. So I dropped two inches. So I'm at 11 and a half inch like rise. 11 and a half inch is, uh, is my comfort zone. So yeah, I know it was back and forth, this, that, but I hope I dialed it in once I'm uh, back on the road in the next day or two, once I recover completely, I'm gonna take it out for a ride, tell you how I feel. I'll also do my shots where I like to, you know, put the bike at one place, put the camera exactly in the same place and take exactly the same picture so I can com compare and show you how my arms are sitting, how my shoulders are sitting, my posture. So that's it. No more nine and a half inch rise on the, uh, on the Thrash and Supply for me. It's a seven and a half inch rise, which is the six and a half inch rise with the one inch rise. I will have links below down by the description where you can find all the parts I used for this setup. Again, it's tweaking. I know I nitpick. I'm too much into details. A lot of people told me that, that, oh, you think too much, Sandy. You know, you, you care too much. You, 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 you don't, you're too much into the details. You care too much. And for those guys that think like that, all I can say is, like that you know what that is or or like that i mean you scroll go to the next video or go you know go up down to the next video watch somebody else i don't care that's who i am i'm into the details i too i think too much sometimes 
but I want to dial it in. I want it to be comfortable. I'm going on a 10,000 mile ride with John and it's going to be three weeks, almost a, almost a month on the road. I got to be comfortable. I got to feel uh, that it's dialed in. And that's it. These are the updates. Dude, it's sweating. I'm sweating bullets over here. It's, it's, it's so hot. It's the heat wave. But you know how us, we complain when it's cold. We complain that it's too cold, that it's too windy, too rainy, and now uh, too hot. And the thing is, actually, I'm too old. That's the main thing. That's it, guys. Uh, big updates. Hope you enjoy this one. I'm Sandy, and you're watching, you're watching this guy, you're watching Holy Shift. Till the next video, guys. Peace out.